Hello, friends, and welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited. Y'all know I'm a big Celine Dion fan. She is making her comeback as somebody who is living with stiff person syndrome. First, Instagram blew up by having this new photo shoot with her. There was a couple of posts, and they did the collaboration things that was on Vogue and Celine Dion, where she just looked so hot. If y'all haven't seen the pictures, you have to. I'll put a link in the description, actually, so you can go check out the pictures. She looks so good. Total queen. We are going to read some of the quotes that she talked about during that interview. She says, I haven't beat the disease as it's still within me and always will be. I hope that we'll find a miracle, a way to cure it with scientific research. But for now, I have to learn to live with it. So that's me now with stiff person syndrome. Five days a week, I undergo athletic, physical and vocal therapy. I work on my toes, my knees, my calves, my fingers, my singing, my voice. I have to learn to live with it now and stop questioning myself. At the beginning, I would ask myself, why me? Why did this happen? What have I done? Is this my fault? I started saying to myself, why me? What happened? What did I do? Am I responsible? Life doesn't give you the answers. You just have to live it. I have this illness for some unknown reason. I have two choices. Either I train like an athlete and work really hard or I disconnect and it's over. I stay at home. I listen to my songs. I sit in front of my mirror and I sing to myself. I chose to work with all of my body and soul from head to toe with a medical team. I want to be the best version of myself. My goal is to see the Eiffel Tower again. It's a little bit heartbreaking, but I mean, what do you expect, right? Like she's trying to make peace with the fact that she has this incurable disease, but she still wants to go forward and have a career. So she has to live with it. But they sat her down during this time and they did a featurette called 13 Looks, Life in Looks. And so we're going to watch that. I'm going to react to it. Now, fun fact, this actually posted the day prior. So this came out today, right? Which is, what is the day today? <laughs> April 23rd. You'll probably see this later because I have to edit it and all that stuff. But uh, it came out the 22nd for like 30 minutes. And a bunch of us saw it. And then they like made it private. They were like, oops. And we're like, but the real one saw it. So Vogue, we, that was a little bit messy. Y'all like put it out there. <laughs> then you took it away right away. But the real ones, we already checked it out. So now the next day, I don't know. Was it, I mean, I have the original version. So I'm, I'm going to watch them both later back to back. I'll watch them at the same time to see maybe they needed to, maybe they were like, oh, we have to cut that out or something. I don't know. Maybe Celine Dion cussed or something. I don't remember her cussing, but... <laughs> <laughs> there was some reason they pulled it back and then put it back out again. So we're going to watch it. <sighs> I purposely tried to like walk out of the kitchen and not watch everything. So I had something fresh, but come on, it's my queen. Y'all know that this takes a while to set up. So I had to watch it immediately. So, but there will be some genuine reactions here. Give you my word. Here we go. Rolling everybody. Shush. <laughs> Celine. Hello everyone. Hold on, can I just say something? Ever since her husband Renee died, and the real ones know this, Celine's sense of humor has got a little bit more snippety. Have you noticed that? She's never been one to actually be shady. She's like pure, genuine, like she has no ill will inside of her. But I think she realizes that like a little bit of sarcasm or a little bit of snippetiness, there was a lot of that in her movie Love Again, but that's another conversation. Uh, when she's a little bit sarcastic or a little bit dry in her humor, I noticed it mostly when she was uh, with Jimmy Fallon and they were doing the musical Wheel of Impressions and she was wearing that silver, you know, dress and talking about Ariana Grande and doing the Rihanna work work <laughs> impersonation. Her sense of humor was a little bit different. Now, I, well, I started to notice it after Renee died, her husband, and it makes sense, right? Like to quote that movie, B Little Black Book, how does a girl fall into a rabbit hole in the midst of chaos or whatever, I'm quoting it wrong, and come out unchanged? She doesn't. She doesn't. There's a time in our lives, I think, where we kind of lose our innocence. I know I have. If, you're gonna, if you watch enough about me and there's some interview stuff coming where I'm going to talk about like my loss of innocence moment in life, some of us, some of us have several, it affects you. 
If you've lost a loved one, a parent, a divorce, lost a child, uh, the worst breakup you've ever gone through, something where you had an internal journey and there's trauma. I mean, maybe you had a midlife crisis, existential crisis. You you are not the same. There's a loss of innocence. And it's almost like you a part of you died. And I do feel like with Celine, when Renee passed, a part of her died. Uh, she doesn't have as much of that like childlike innocence. I, th- I think uh, some snippetiness kind of got up in her and stayed. But even with that, she she's still, I mean, she's the most positive celebrity. Like she's full of love. She's silly. Um, she's kind to everybody. She's world class. I just had to throw that out there. So I don't want to stop this too much because we have a lot to react to. Bonjour tout le monde. Mm. Take two, please. Hello, Vogue. <laughs> this is Celine Dion, and this is my life in looks. Yay, Celine! Oof. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. It's yes. quite something. The first page. I was obviously dressing myself at that time. Ah. It's like deciding my songs. Why did I choose that outfit? How did I choose my outfit? Because you look great. the same thing as people would propose songs to me and I would pick the songs that I like, that I think that I can serve. But for the clothes, I thought I looked hot. You do look hot. But looking today, I have to respect that very much because you look at my face and my energy and the Mm. way that i'm just i own the jeans and the top and the microphone and the stage and the guitar player and yes you did celine it it was fashion change life changes it's touching for me because it's my early days it's the same passion it's the same me Mm -hmm. should i really have the courage to turn the next page (laughs) speechless My husband and I got married in 94, December 17, to be precise. I still feel his presence so much. This is a moment that will be with me for the rest of my life. The dress couldn't have been big enough. I could have (laughs) had three times the size of my head. I could have had six different dresses that night because he was and is still such a wonderful human being. He brought the best of me. I have to say, it was a very Catholic wedding, like cathedral and that whole thing. I'm not Catholic. I was raised Catholic, but I'm not Catholic anymore. But I, I want a Catholic wedding. Like, if I ever do get married, like she says, the hair couldn't be bigger, the dress couldn't be bigger, like, just over the top, <laughs> you know, like, more is more in this kind of situation. And she was just so in love. If you know their story, they had been hiding their love uh, for so many years because they knew it was controversial. Um, You know, he met her when she was a child, literally. Now people think, oh, what? They got together? No, they didn't get together then. It was a very strictly professional relationship while she was a child. And then people don't know this. She went away because she wanted some time, some space to become a woman, to grow up and to get a makeover so that when she did see him again, it was like a re a different Celine. And it was when she met him again as a full grown adult, that's when they started their, their romantic relationship. I know it's still controversial for a lot of people, but hate is going to hate. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, but so because of that, even though it wasn't the most like, traditional fairy tale terms that they became together they knew that the fans might have a reaction to it and some did the parent her own parents did but it was like this forbidden love now she was able to celebrate it so doing the wedding it was like we have to do it all we have to do it big go big or go home kind of a thing you know he really did this big piece is not glued to my head obviously it has been (laughs) so so no problem, I can manage the weight. And, and when you're so happy, there's no weight, there's no problem, there's no pain. We kind of rehearsed one time with the dress and the big veil and all that. And it was on, in a big ballroom and it was all made of like um, beautiful wooden floors. I practice and everything is smooth and everything is fine. But when I had to walk the cathedral, is no wooden floor, is carpet. Ooh, I had an immediate facelift. 
<laughs> I start to walk and I go like. <laughs> All back. And it's like, am I going to make it? Am yes, I going to make it to my future husband? But like I said, oh, I'm going to run to you. I, I did. Okay, I'm sorry. Who is the video editor for this on Vogue? When Celine starts to sing, you shut off the background music. What are you doing still playing background music while Cel the greatest singer of all time is giving us vocals since her diagnosis. What are you doing playing cheesy elevator jazzy background music? I have issues with whoever you are that did this editing job on Vogue. That is a no-no. So all night, all great, people happy. But when we removed that, Tiara, I had a cut <gasps> because the pressure was too much. The next day, I wake up, I look at myself in the mirror, I have the size of an egg. Oh, goose egg. In the middle of my forehead. A knot, yeah. I look at my husband and I said, it's too late now, we're married. <laughs> but it's so huge that it make my eyes look like this. <laughs> it's too late now, we're married. You gotta, you gotta take the goose egg forehead now. <laughs> Oh, Celine, I love you. <laughs> oh, this is incredible. Oh, Celine, I'm gay, but I'll marry you too. I'm like, okay, let's go to the doctor. So I had to be on antibiotics for about three weeks. Oh. But um, here it is. I look good in that dress. But it's a Versace dress too, come mm. on. It's pretty amazing for me to discover this. I have bought everything in my life. If it was not possible to buy oh. it, well, it was not possible to buy it for oh. whatever reason because Celine. it's not even in production yet. So it's just being released uh, uh, three days ago and I can borrow it. Otherwise, I would buy all the stuff. But <laughs> at this age, still very young, beautiful dress from Versace. Versace was one of my favorite designers, of course. It is a lifetime memory. There's a big story mm. about this picture because James Cameron, the director of the movie, did not want any song. Mm -hmm. He said, my movie is great enough. I don't need any songs. The writer came, I think, secretly. James Horner. And I was in Las Vegas. Renee and I were there. So James Cameron is the director. James Horner was the the, he wrote the score, he wrote the songs, he wrote the music. He was the mind behind the score and the song, My Heart Will Go On, as far as the melody. The melody. And he started to play us the song. Yeah, for wherever you. And my husband is watching me and he's. Okay, this is strike two for the Vogue editor. Why do you have the cheesy background music when she's telling you a story that incorporates her vocals and her singing and humming? And what is wrong with you? I'm so, I, are you must be irritated. I'm irritated with them. Watching him and he said, James, 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 we should stop right now. And I'm like, and I'm looking at Renee and I'm, I'm like this. <laughs> I don't want to sing the song. So he says to the writer, he says, James, I have an idea. Why don't we just go to Los Angeles. We'll do like a, a little maquette, a little demo. She can put her voice on it. When he said that, <laughs> obviously I knew uh -huh. that I was going to be in trouble. I don't want to sing the song. The director of the movie doesn't want to have a song in his movie. And I know that when I get into a studio and I hear music, I get into a character. If you read her book, she talks about how when she approaches a microphone, she becomes a brand new character. There, She doesn't, like in the video for Ashes, when he's like, Celine, remember... Um, Ryan Reynolds, he's playing Deadpool. He says, Celine, just phone it in. Just don't, you know, give us a five. You know, you're at 11. She's like, uh, this only goes to 11. <laughs> like, Celine has never called it in. Celine Dion gives her, she gives the performance of her lifetime every time she sings. So, 
you're never going to get like a half butt version of anything from Celine Dion. So if she's going to go in there to do a demo, she's going to slay the demo. And I want you to listen to this because this is very important. That song, My Heart Will Go On, which is arguably the biggest song of a soundtrack of any of all time, like the only other one that rivals it or, you know, depending on the source is my, uh, I Will Always Love You with Whitney Houston. But those are the two big two. Depending on the source, you know, My Heart Will Go On sometimes is the bigger one. One take. One take. She got up to the microphone, sang it from start to finish, all the way through, one time. And that became the version you hear. They built the orchestra around it. Now, if that doesn't make her alone the greatest singer of all time, I don't know what does. And I even sell it to myself. So I start to sing the song. It tells me about the story of the movie a little bit. I'm already in tears, but it's a demo. It's just to put my voice, one take, just quick, just for them to present to the director that insisting on putting this song in the movie. I sang the song and- You slayed it. I never re-sang the song to record it, to make it as a record. They use my voice is a one take thing. So this is a dress from Michael Kors. We can like a boss. You see how she's just explaining it to you? She's not flexing. <laughs> Girl, let me have a story like that. I would flex like a mofo. She's like, oh, yeah, they, they had, I just went in there. I sang it one time and they built the orchestra around me. They just, you know, oh, that's it. Girl, you better flex. I was going to name some other singers that are in her league, and but I don't want to get the fans coming against me because <laughs> she does have her contemporaries that. People say, oh, you know, because there's a very small list of the greatest singer of all time list. I, I put Celine at the top, but um, I don't really know any other singers other than Celine that can flex like what the way that she just did. I did the dress together and I asked him if he would be willing to do a turtleneck dress like a glove. And he looked at me like, are you sure you want to have a turtleneck? <laughs> the décolleté, the... The, the sparkles of the day. That was dress, not the girl. point for me. I want to sing this song the best I can. And wearing this Asprey, the heart of the ocean. This is the moment, the Oscar, the dress that I felt good in. And it won. Wearing John Galliano was pretty <laughs> fantastic. I thought my stylist made a mistake by putting this outfit the other way around. <laughs> I thought my stylist made a mistake by having this <laughs> outfit the other way around. Can you imagine the stylist comes up? You're like, girl, you, this is backwards. I'm like, why am I paying you the good money for this? That was funny to me. Well, we just left the turtleneck and now we're having a jacket <laughs> that's open in the back. And on top of that, every woman were in dresses wearing pants in a suit that's backward, it's pretty gutsy fears. Years passed and now it became like it's something iconic. that people still talk about because yeah. I trusted my stylist and I love John Galliano and here I am owning that big time. Yeah, Celine took a lot of risks y'all in fashion. She this has a, in she's a fashion icon. Obviously summertime. I don't want to sound pretentious, but I think I look good. You look real good, that girl. That hair was because I was already on stage. My first residency with Franco Dragon uh, with A New Day and my hair got bleached and short and shorter and shorter and shorter. People hated it and they called it the Peter Pan haircut. She did it for her show, A New Day, where she had the very, very short platinum blonde Peter Pan hair. People hated it. It grew out a little bit, and then they tried to do a DVD of A New Day, and I wanted to see it, because she really is giving great performances in it. But people just hated that look, so they threw it in the trash can, and she called it the most expensive haircut in the industry, because all of the footage filmed with her having it, they had to throw it away because the fans wanted her long brown hair the way that they knew her. So it was during this time that she was invited to go sing across the street because it was in Vegas at uh, Divas Duets. Was it or just VH1? It was just Divas or something. I don't know. Uh, so she went there that night. Women do that. And it's fun. Whether well, it's like wardrobe, hair, makeup, songs, music, style. But I remember that I had to leave wearing this dress to go 
and, and do a performance. Nobody told me, obviously, that there was a big ramp going down and I did not have any anti-slippery under my shoes. I was holding on to my toenail, trust me. <laughs> but I love that look. I don't know if it's the, the color, but I love it. I just love it. Oh, this one, okay. I think it's La Roche who had the guts to make me wear something that's basically iconic, the Titanic. He loves and he's very passionate about fashion and to be creative and trying to find something that exists already but make a twist out of it. I'm coming out of this hotel with the Titanic and the, the ship is sinking and I'm like, <laughs> but it went viral and it was, it was, it was a big thing. So. That's his talent. He knows when it's time to do something, and I guess it was time. <laughs> I love that dress so much. Oh. The cloud. And I think the crowd loved that dress as well. Mm -hmm. What I loved is that the director and the way that he presented. I was in the middle of a chandelier. Mm. I was surrounded. I was in the middle of the chandelier. Oh. It was very touching for me because... It was my favorite dress she's ever worn. I think that that's my favorite, right? It, she's looking like a queen from heaven. The Angel. whole crowd, the whole place sang with me that night. Their voices was captured into my in-ears through the microphone and I could hear. I had a choir that night and a cloud dress, so it was amazing. That was a photo shoot, so much fun, so much work. It was for Vogue magazine, very haute couture and crazy. I couldn't believe what they presented to me. I said, that goes on my head. I thought it was a cake and it was amazing. It, it was just, it was just amazing. Le Moulin Rouge. It was a night out. Everything about Paris is la vie en rose and the sky's the limit. And you look at people walking and it just feels that Whatever you love, for me, it, I, I want to love more when I'm in Paris. It makes me love mm. things more. So it's difficult to come back home. <laughs> <laughs> this one is my first Met Gala in 2019, actually. Oscar de la Renta. Forget about it. I am like, <laughs> just, 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 just amazing. The bangs, the hair is gold and this the hair. another piece. The bangs. I don't know what's going on with pieces on my head. Those feathers on my head that night, it was not easy, but I loved myself so much. And there was a party after, so they did a dress for me after that I loved as much. It was amazing. I think Cher did perform while we were having this dinner. And Her friend, their friends place that I'm like, who are we? Where are we? Where are we going with all that? It is step by spectacular. This is the night to be. I was honored and then- Okay, that was so good. I love, can we hear that again? And who are we? Where are we? Where are we going with all that? It is step by spectacular. This is the night to be. I was honored. Why is there stupid background music? Come on, I can't be the only one that's annoyed by that. Vogue, you're fired. You're a, sorry, I have to name I have to I have to name call. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Whoever did that, whoever played music in the background of Celine Dion singing live, like what is unacceptable. So unprofessional and just stupid. And then Cher comes and performs and we're like I was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm like, this is it. How humble is she? To be arguably, I would say inarguably, the greatest singer of all time, the biggest selling female recording artist in history, super talented, super successful, a singer's singer, and still a fan. And being like, oh, and then Cher came and then, uh, and she loves the younger crowds too. She loves Beyonce. She likes Christina Aguilera a lot. Uh, Adele, Josh Groban, Kelly Clarkson. She praises the younger generations too. So she's just humble queen. Peggy, I just see something right now. The heart of the ocean that I'm wearing right now. I did not buy it. Just to set the record straight here. I always buy my stuff, I always buy everything. Calm down. This is a replica, you can buy it in Paris for 10 bucks. And I uh, <laughs> just wanted to say, on top of it, like it's not enough, 
to have a one sleeve jacket, short skirt, bob hair, pointy glasses. Let's add one more thing to all that. Gonna bring the Titanic back. You're gonna wear as for the heart of the ocean. Sing that song one more time and spin. It's the fake one, but. Uh, okay, this is the last you'll hear me talk about it, but just so that I know that I did, please fire the editor who put music over Celine singing. I, I'm gonna look in the comments. Those of you that agree with me, let them have it in the comments because this is not okay. I wore it like it was the real thing. I can't put all this together, but I love to play and you have to trust the people that you work with. And I trusted him and I guess people love that. And it was fun. It was a very nerve wracking and at the same time, a big honor. That magic, that excitement to see the fans, to see the crowd, to see show business again. I'm wondering if she's going to talk about Taylor. I don't think she will because she's super classy. She's non-combative. Like there's nothing about her that enjoys shade or conflict or whatever. Um, so I'm assuming, not assuming, I'm guessing from knowing her for so many years that she is going to just completely not mention the, ta the big Taylor Swift shade moment that went viral when Taylor completely ignored her during this time. And you know that Vogue put that picture in there for that reason. Come on, they want tea. You know they're going to be like, oh, let's see what she's going to say about this. Even if it was just to say, you know, a lot of people made a big deal about the fact that Taylor seemed to not acknowledge me, you know, but even just saying that, even if she's going to say something nice is bringing it up, she's going to keep it about just the outfit. I know, I, I know it. It took a lot. A lot out of me, but my son, Rene Charles, RC, came and gave me his support. And to present the award, the album of the year, to Taylor Swift, it's an honor because she's having the time of her life. Of course, and they I'm show the that one image. That's presenting it to her. But it's always very, very um, touching when you have a standing ovation. I was like, I can walk on stage with a coat. Oh, yeah. You can do whatever you want in fashion. Let's have a good time. Wear that coat, own that coat, go for it. And it made me feel better for a moment to hold on to this coat, to hide myself a little bit from all these little things. I got my own imperfections. I got my own. I got my own imperfections. Celine, don't lie. Why are you lying for? I got my own pole done. <laughs> so, we did it. Well, thank you very much, Vogue. Mm -hmm. This has been my life and looks. Thank you. I don't want it to it's end. Time for me to guys. sign it now. I don't want this to end. No, just keep it rolling. Just follow her everywhere. We get, oh, we get the, the documentary, I Am Celine Dion, June 25th. I love you. I love you, Celine Dion, I love you! I love you so much, we Queen. We the bob out. <laughs> put the Thank bob you so out. much. <laughs> no, I don't want it to end! I don't want it to end. Oh gosh, you guys. Okay, I don't, this is where I would probably want to ramble forever. I don't want to ramble forever. If you enjoyed this, please smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, drop me a comment. Please agree with me that they should not have played music behind Celine Dion singing live. Completely un unacceptable. Um, but yes, let me know what your favorite look was. How do you feel about her? Totally having the opportunity to confront the Taylor Swift stuff, but not doing it. It's just, right? She's just a queen. She's just so classy. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. I really miss her. I'm excited about the DVD. Please, I'm going to say it this way too. Please click the like button. Sometimes I know I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm like, oh, I like this, but 
I don't always click the like button. It really helps the algorithm. If you're new here, please smash the subscribe button so you can see another video just like this. Uh, yeah, just I'm just being vulnerable with you. <laughs> I love making content like this. Those two little things, you don't have to donate any money. You can just <laughs> click the subscribe and click the like and I'll be a happy camper. But I will see you in the next video. I love you. God bless you. Till then, take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll see you later. Mwah. Bye.